been called specifically to discuss our ballot result, which we have just um, discussed as a National Executive Committee. I'm Fran Heathcote, I'm the President of PCS, and joining me today will be Mark Sawatka, our General Secretary. The intention is to give you as much information as we can in the time that we've got, but also for you to make any initial comments, observation, questions, etc. So usual thing, if you have a question or comment that you want to, to make, don't send it to me if you have my contact details because I won't receive it. Put it into the chat. The admins will tell you which chat to send it to and those admins will filter the, the questions and comments through to me and I'll make sure we get through as many of them as possible. So without any further ado, recognising that there's an awful lot of information to impart and uh, we, we've obviously got a limited time to do this. I'm going to hand straight over to Mark, our General Secretary, and Mark will take you through the discussion that the National Executive Committee has just had. So over to you, Mark. Well, thank you very much, uh, Fran, and a big thanks to Anne-Marie for doing the, the, the signing for us. And um, can I welcome all members who, who are joining us on, on Facebook Live? Um, what we want to do at this uh, sort of session is to give people the highlights um, of the national ballot result that the NEC has just received, explain to people what decisions that we've just made and what's going to happen next, uh, and to give people a chance initially to raise any questions, but to reassure people that we will be doing more of these events and there'll be lots of communications that, that will be going out. I mean, the first thing to say is, is I want to thank all members and all reps uh, and staff of PCS who have worked so hard over the past six weeks and six months before that uh, to deliver the ballot result. This ballot has been held against the most difficult backdrop we've ever known, massive cost of living crisis, real problems for our members in terms of low income, threats to their jobs, indeed redundancies have been announced in some departments during the course uh, of, of the ballot itself. We've also had um, problems with the post, thanks to the uh, fantastic strike action being taken by our colleagues in the CWU, which has meant that we were balloting in quite a difficult period of time. I mean, against that backdrop, I'm happy to announce on behalf of the NEC that we have delivered a historic result in the, in the nature of PCS. We have not only managed to achieve a yes vote for strike action of 86.2%, by far the highest this union has ever achieved in a statutory ballot. We have managed to do that and break the threshold in 126 departments and public sector bodies out of the 214 that we were balloted. That means that over two thirds of members who are covered in this ballot have got a ballot threshold passed. And it means that we are immediately able now to call for industrial action that will involve 100,000 PCS members. That is an incredible result, not only because we've delivered such a massive yes vote, but because we literally have smashed the threshold in so many employers. Some of the turnouts in the areas where the thresholds have been beaten have been close on 80%. Um, and the average across all areas that have got over the line um, is 56 and a half percent. So that is a pretty remarkable turnout. It's also important to stress that in the areas that have delivered yes vote for action are all the key areas that we believe were required to immediately put pressure on the government this side of Christmas and into the new year because they represent some of the key areas of government service and public sector delivery. So we have beaten the threshold in the biggest group of the union, the DWP. That means tens of thousands of members can now take action. We've also, for example, beaten it in the Home Office, Department for Transport and every agency within the Department of Transport, which includes key areas such as the DVLA and the DVSA and National Highways and the Coast Guards. We smashed the ballot in DEFRA, in Bays, Department for Leveling Up, Land Registry, DCMS, the Cabinet Office itself, across virtually all parts of Scotland where we had delegated or devolved authority in Scotland, and many, many more areas, 126 areas that have PCS members delivering frontline services can now be called upon to take industrial action. 
67 of those areas delivered a yes vote for strike action of over 90%, including 100% in one employer and over 95% in a number of others. All of that, I think, is testament to the work that activists have put in, the willingness of members to say it is now or never to defend my and my family's livelihoods, and it represents the best result that the union has ever had. Indeed, across the union as a whole, for the first time in our history, we achieved over the 50% legal threshold and achieved a national overall average turnout of 51.5%. So these are all historic moves and represent huge progress since the union balloted last time. However, there are some areas that we balloted where we achieved massive yes votes, but we didn't quite get over the line. There are at least six employers where we were one vote short of getting over the 50%. And clearly we believe that with all the postal disruption that those areas probably would have won had it not been the time that the ballot was actually held. Literally one vote in six employers and would have got another six employers over the line. I think it is important for any members in HMRC who, who are, are listening on this call that we record in HMRC, we had a massive yes vote for action, but we are slightly below the legal threshold, 750 votes short to be precise. And that does mean that whilst very much HMRC members are part of the national campaign, they need more money like everyone else. They need job security. They need no cuts in their compensation scheme. And they also uh, need no massive job cuts. Um, the National Executive Committee in the decision is just made has agreed that we will move very early in 2023 to reballot in HMRC, where hopefully there won't be the disruption that we have seen uh, a broader, you know, particularly with the post, in order to ensure HMRC can join the majority of the rest of the union as early in 2023 as possible. So Fran, what I wanted to do now is to just set out for people what the NEC has just decided and what we intend to do with this result. Firstly, I can confirm, if you comply with our legal obligations, all employers will be receiving um, and I've already probably started to receive individual notification from the union about the result. That's a legal requirement. So wherever you work, your employer will, by the end of the day, be given notice of how the ballot has gone in your particular employer. We will also, during the afternoon, make available for all members the full list of ballot results. And all members will receive an email from the union later on today, giving them a link where people can click on to see absolutely how their own individual employer um, has voted and that will all happen during the afternoon. There will be a press conference later on this afternoon because obviously we're getting a lot of media inquiries on the back of all the industrial action being taken in other unions and particularly on the back of the vote of the Royal College of Nursing that was announced yesterday. So what we have decided as an NEC today is on the back of this result and following this Facebook Live um, that we have written, we have already written uh, already before this meeting, just, just since the NEC has finished, to the government and to the cabinet office. And in that letter, we have fulfilled our promise made to members that the first thing we will do when we get the result is not to call a strike, but to give the government and the cabinet office the opportunity to table proposals to the union to deliver more money job security and no cuts to our redundancy terms in order to meet the demands that we have made. So we've written today, giving them seven days in order to table proposals and meet with the union. And in the event that that does not happen, we have already made arrangements that your national executive committee will meet next Friday, that's the 18th of November, where we will announce the industrial action that will be taken, a program of industrial action following this successful mandate. It's really important, Fran, just to explain to people what that means and why we've done it. What we want to do here is to first of all explore with the government over a very short timetable so they can't drag it out, whether they're prepared to make any concessions to our demands. I think we're all skeptical as to whether or not they're likely to do it, but we promised members that we would try that first and we have written to give them seven days to do so. In a week's time, we will consider any response that we get from them. But given our expectation, I mean, I hope that they do make concessions, but if they don't, the executive next Friday will serve notice and will call the beginning of a programme of industrial action. 
Now, before we make that decision, it's important that people know two important things. Firstly, I am meeting on Monday with every union in the TUC that has either balloting now for industrial action or has a live mandate. That will include the health unions, the teaching unions, unions such as the RMT, train drivers union has left, postal workers, college lecturers. The purpose of that meeting is that every union that has a mandate or is balloting will be discussing whether or not it's possible to coordinate all of our campaigns to ensure that any action being called can be done together with other unions. When we meet next Friday, we will know whether that is possible or not and over what timescale. We're confident that we will be able to coordinate with other unions. It's about trying to pin down how quickly that can happen. The second thing that we're doing is that we are now talking in detail um, to the elected leaders of the various employers around the union who have given us their areas of leverage, i.e. Uh, e., where in their employer sustained targeted action could really have an impact to ensure that we fulfill the promise we've made to members that the action we call, if it is unpaid because all members are out at the same time, should be done to maximise its effect and hopefully always be done with other unions because that will create better pressure on the government. But if it's action that we're taking on a targeted and sustained basis, that it won't be about one day strikes, it will be about action over a longer period designed to have the maximum impact. The NEC has agreed today that that action will attract significant financial support for members being asked to take action on behalf of everybody else. And we will release full details of that when we meet next week. But what it means is that the union will be in a position to sustain long-term action in the areas that have the most effect by being able to financially support members who are being asked to come out on behalf of everyone else. To facilitate that, when the NEC met, meets next week, it will make a decision on how to raise money in addition to the millions that we currently have in our fighting fund to ensure that that action can be sustained over up to a six month period, which is the legal force that the ballot has. So the assurance we can give to members here is if everyone's asked to come out without pay, it will be because it will have an effect, because hopefully it will be with other unions, and it will certainly be time to have the maximum impact. Where we take action designed to put continuous pressure on the government, that action will receive financial support from the union so the members don't lose out, because they'll be taking action on behalf of everyone else. We only have to look at the current situation to know that our members in DWP, our members in the Home Office, for example, which is particularly incredibly sensitive for the government, our members in the Department of Transport, just to name a few, who if they were to take sustained action in targeted areas at the moment would put massive pressure on the government. It's not just them, every group has tabled with us proposals as to where hard-hitting action could be taken. Fran, in, in coming to a conclusion, what all of that is designed to tell people today is this. We've delivered a historic vote in over 126 employers smashed a threshold with a yes vote that is 86%. We have come incredibly close in a series of other employers, including HMRC, and we are committed to going back to HMRC, given its size, to reballot in a hope that those members can be joining in pretty quickly. We're meeting every other union on Monday to see if we can coordinate our efforts with health and education and post and rail to give us a better chance of winning and to also make sure that the government has to make concessions to all workers who deserve so much more than they're getting. But we also have plans and the ability to take paid targeted action on a sustained basis that can put real pressure on the government. And that is the programme of action that we will consider and announce next week. So my finishing message to people now is we should be proud of what we've achieved, where you've come close. We can look again at reballoting so that people can join in. We hopefully will be taking our action alongside everybody else who deserves such better treatment. And the government should sit up and realise this is the biggest vote for action in the history of our union, the biggest yes vote, with the threshold smashed for the first time and beaten in over 126 areas. Our job now is to try to persuade them to make concessions in the next week. But if that doesn't happen, it's to ensure that the action we deliver can win. So if you're on this call, if you know anyone who's not in the union, now's the time to get them to join. If the union grows, it makes our chance of winning better. If you're in one of those key targeted areas, 
Know that when we come to you, the union will financially support you to ensure that you can sustain this action. And if we come to all members and ask you to play your part, it is doing so in the knowledge that all of us out together, particularly with others, means that we can win. Let's hope the government listen in the next week. But if not, let's make sure this campaign is successful. We build it as we go and the government will see in the days and weeks ahead the real value of the work that our members do because when they stop doing it public services will not be delivered so let's keep our heads high be strong and let's make sure that we don't just win the ballot which we have done but to win the dispute and we're confident we can do that thank you okay thanks very much mark and hopefully that will be welcome news to a number of people but there are lots and lots of questions and comments that are coming in and what i'll try to do is put them into some sort of logical order so just a couple of straightforward ones emma mooney says she's absolutely made up that's brilliant martin cabana who is the ddp president says solidarity from ddp group brilliant ballot result delivered a mandate bigger than we've ever had before well done all and thank you um Dawn Finnegan says strike action is the best decision ever. However, as a single mom, I'm now worried about the financial consequences and I'm sure I'm not alone in this. So hopefully some of what Mark has just outlined will, will be helpful. Um, Jennifer, I'm nervous about the financial impact of striking, but I know it's for the greater good. Karen Alderson, excellent work, Home Office comrades, very well done everyone. JJ, uh, John Jameson, a big thanks from every to every member who helped to deliver this historic vote for PCS. So those are just a few shout, out, shout outs, which I think are a good way of getting into the detail of what's been discussed. So hopefully, hopefully what Mark's outline does address some of these, but it might be helpful, Mark, some of the most, you know, you know, the ones that have been repeated the most for me to bring you back and, ju and just reiterate the points that you need to, to make it all very clear. So. Nicola asks, do individuals receive the equivalent of their day's pay or a lesser set amount if they receive strike pay? And obviously the NEC that meets next week will determine the detail of that. I don't know if you want to just reiterate the, 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 what you outlined at the beginning, Mark, around all of that. Yes, and, and thanks very much to Nicola. And, and it's great to see that already the media is covering uh, the story. It's already out there, The Guardian and the BBC. And that's ahead of our press conference. So that's really good news. So thanks very much for Nicola for the question. So, so I just want to be really clear. There is no union in Britain that is able to pay strike pay when it calls all its members out. That, that, that's something no one can do. So if all members are asked to come out, it would be unpaid. But as I stressed, what we want to do is make sure that if we do that, it has the maximum effect and it's preferable as with other unions because then we will be putting pressure on the government. Where we're asking groups of members to take targeted action, the NEC was very clear today that those members should not financially lose out when they're taking action on behalf of everyone else. The exact means by which we do that will be settled next Friday and any member being asked to come out will be told. But broadly, it means if you're out on targeted action, the union will be financially supporting people and people will not financially be worse off. And because of that, and because we've costed all of this, Fran, it's important to say that we know, therefore, that that action could be incredibly significant. It's not cheap, but the government would have real problems if that area is targeted. And that is why what the NEC will also discuss next week is that we believe it's important that all members are asked to contribute more than the 50p you currently contribute to the union's fighting fund to allow us to show the employers that we can carry on, carry on this action indefinitely. And what I just wanted to say about that is that, you know, our, our view is if people are asked to put the 50p up to more money, whilst we accept that at the moment that everybody is really suffering with a financial squeeze, Clearly, if people were, for example, asked to give a pound a week or five pounds a month, then obviously that is a heck of a lot less than the 50 to 100 pounds a day that people lose every time there's a one day strike. So what we're trying to get over here is if members are asked to come out for a long time, the union will financially support them so they don't lose out. We have four million pounds already in order to start that off. We can keep that going a while, but we will need to raise a lot more. And that's important because we need the government to know we're not going to run out of money. So one of the things people should expect, I think, next week is that the action will be very focused and targeted, that where people lose pay, it will only be if it's, I think, going to have a 
big effect, particularly if it's with other unions. But people may be asked, therefore, to ensure that they chip in a little bit more to help us to cover the pay of those colleagues taking action. And if all of that's done, nobody will lose money for sustained periods of action. The government will really feel the effect of our strikes. And when everybody loses money, it will be hopefully uh, something that will have a very big effect and will be a more scarce. So I, I hope I've explained that question to Nicola and can assure Nicola that if she was one of the ones we asked to come out for a sustained period, she would not lose out financially. That's great. Thank you, Mark. OK, a couple more observations. Chris Hughes says, I'm not surprised one bit. There is massive widespread discontent all over the nation right now in so many industries. And I echo that, Chris. And Kay Elson says, shout out to all the reps that worked so hard during this ballot period. It wouldn't have happened without you. And that's absolutely the case. You know, we're, we're so proud of our reps and all the people that have put such a massive effort in. Um, there are a couple of specifics, Mark, that it might be helpful for you to address. So Joshua says, the ballot is disaggregated. How will PCS coordinate the action between eligible branches to maximise the disruption? Following this, how will branches be informed about these decisions? So it might be good, Mark, if you're able to just um, elaborate on that a little bit. And then, and then there's some other questions here. OK, so, so, so to be clear, we can only call action if you are in a branch that is in an employer that's got over the threshold, and there are 126 of those employers, um, where we haven't got over the threshold, people cannot take any action unless we reballot. And, and as we've said, we already want to do that with HMRC. So what will happen now is, is that the National Disputes Committee and the NEC in a week's time will agree a programme of action designed to have the maximum effect. And that means, just to give some examples, Fran, that we may look, for example, if you're in Scotland, it's clear in Scotland, there is a wave of action that is likely to take place, including teachers in Scotland, as well as health workers. The votes that we have had in Scotland are particularly strong. We know that the Scottish government will make certain announcements. So it may be the need to coordinate in Scotland um, is a pressing issue, we can do that. If you're in any other part of the UK, what we're looking at doing is coordinating within PCS but also with other unions. So to give an example, if the rail workers call a strike, then we think it is important that all our members in the Department for Transport who can have an effect on the running of our transport systems, we consider bringing out at the same time because it'll have a much stronger effect. Similarly, if our members working in the Home Office were asked to take action, given the political pressure on the government in the Home Office at the moment around borders, then clearly that may have a specific effect. So what we want to assure people is, is we will be consulting with the lead reps in all of these areas, but the idea of the targeted action is to make us stronger within PCS, stronger within our regions and nations, but also action that looks at what other unions are doing. And that's the combination of things um, that will happen. But the assurance is if you're, if you're a member or a rep in an area we want to take part in targeted action, there will be separate communications with those people so that everybody understands exactly the duration, the levels of strike pay and the support that the union will give. OK, thanks so much. And probably in what you've just said, you've partially answered this, but Kate Douglas asks, can we strike with the UCU on the 30th of November? I don't know if you want to just pick that up. So the answer is no to that because we have to give 14 days notice and we can't now do that for that date, given that we have agreed to give the Cabinet Office a week in order to um, uh, make any proposals. The NEC did look at that this morning, Fran, and I think that the view that we had is we are conscious that UCU has announced, but the meeting that we're going to on Monday is with, I think, 30 unions. And what we want to be in a position of is knowing where all of those unions are and to make any announcements um, from there. It follows, therefore, the earliest date that we can take any industrial action is essentially 14 days after November the 18th, which takes us into early December. So, um, but what we hope to do is obviously not just understand what the UCU are doing, but also where all of the other unions in the public sector are as well to coordinate our efforts to maximum effect. Okay, thank you. There's a couple of posts from the same person. I think they're based on a bit of a misunderstanding. So I'll read them out, but um, it, 
it probably helpful to to clarify this specifically, Mark. So Ryan Gordon asks, why haven't the results already gone out to reps and members in advance of this meeting, as was previously announced? And goes on to say, if management is told the result before reps and members, then that's a sad state of affairs. And clearly, you know, there are legal obligations to what we have to do, but it might be helpful, Mark, for you to just spell that out a little bit. Yeah, could you just repeat the first question? Yes, of course. So that was, why haven't the results already gone out to reps and members in advance of this meeting, as was previously announced? Right, okay. And, and also about the management knowing first. Yeah, so, yes. so to be clear, the management won't know first. What, 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 we have a legal obligation to notify the employers and you have to, uh, and unions have found ballots in if, sort of, if you like, scraped out by the court, they've lost the legal ability to take strike action if they don't tell the employer in line with the legislation. So because there are 214 sets of results, the union only received them at eight o'clock this morning, there's a huge job of work to go through each and every one with the scrutineers, be ready to employ, tell the employers and to tell the members. Our hope had been that we'd have all of that on the website by 12 o'clock. Uh, and as the morning has progressed, it's just become clear that that's become more of a difficult task. Uh, there's been some, some problems with that. So what I can assure people is members will be able to access their results at the same time as any employer gets notified. It will not be afterwards, it'll be at the same time. And that is going to happen during the course of the afternoon. Uh, but we felt it was very important that we gave an overall summary of the results here. So that's just one of those sort of, if you like, logistical problems with so many different ballots and the complexities of the law. But it will all be out this afternoon and members will get it um, at the same time as employers have to be notified, which is the law. OK, thanks, Mark. That's helpful. Wendy Turner asks, will we get the results down to branch level? Wendy, I can probably answer that. We will, but not immediately because of the the. the the sheer volume of, of branches that we have. Um, it's going to take Civica a few days to get that information to us, but eventually all of that information will be available and we'll be able to share bran with branches how their individual branches done and, and the NEC will receive that data. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, Monty, will there be a strike fund made available for colleagues worried about financial implications? I think Monty, Mark's probably covered that in what he said previously around uh, the money that will be generated and the dis decisions that will be made at the NEC next week we will, that will decide exactly how that's going to work. As soon as those decisions have been taken, we'll communicate very clearly on, on all of that. There are a number of posts, Mark, in the, uh, that are coming through to me from HMRC reps who are members saying how absolutely gutted they are um, because clearly they've fallen just short. Um, um, what are the plans for HMRC? Uh, um, I, yeah, so just Jazz Turner's post probably, you know, ca encapsulates a lot of it. So disappointed at our results. So much hard work went into it. Um, why does the union think we can manage it in 2023? So if you could just reiterate the plan for the HMRC and how we will work with the group to del deliver on that, it would be helpful, I think. Yeah, and, and look, look, obviously, I, we understand why it's disappointing for it's, it's disappointing for all of us that HMRC have fallen just short. I mean, just to clarify, it is 746 votes short, and the yes vote in HMRC was nearly 85%. So what we know is if we didn't have these undemocratic laws that are not applied anywhere else, HMRC members have shown absolutely clearly, you know, over 80% of them are there for strike action, but we fell just short. Um, and, you know, as I said at the beginning, there's a number of factors that the whole unions had to deal with. Significant disruption in the mail, incredibly complex uh, sort of balloting arrangements, legal loopholes, the employers have been making it difficult. We know in HMRC there's been a significant sort of restructuring over previous, you know, over years, but now some, some of the biggest branches in the union. So there, there's there's been some issues that are hard to, to get over. Um, but we believe that we can win in HMRC. And obviously with the full resource of the union focusing on that one group, which is now what will happen, rather than with this ballot, obviously we've had to do our resources across all 214 areas. 
I, I know we're not just confident, but there's a number of HMRC members on the National Executive Committee who spoke today and are also very confident. And it's very important that we go there first because adding HMRC in will send a very clear signal to the government that the dispute, which will start next week, and is going to be very effective right from the get-go, will get bigger as others join in. So, so we do believe that we can win. And what we need all members in HMRC to know is that irrespective of any longer term pay arrangements that they've had in there in recent times, every member in HMRC suffers an inflation rate of 10%. Nobody has been able to match the rate of inflation. The job cuts that are coming from the government, which even though they are not now saying it's 91,000 in two and a half years, will be massive. Next week's budget is going to announce huge job cuts. Members in HMRC are overpaying for their pensions and need the redundancy terms as much as everyone else. So we need to make sure that everybody can see that. We hope that our colleagues in HMRC will be buoyed by seeing a bigger group, DWP, showing that it can be done. And if you analyze the results from the website, you will see, as I say, that in some areas of the union, we've had 70 to 80% turnout. So we think it can be done. Maybe disappointing today, and maybe HMRC's management will breathe a sigh of relief. But what we've got to show them is the action will start and HMRC will be joining us very soon in 2023. And I think that's the message that we want to give them. And that will give us more impact when we get to that. But we've already got key parts of the union over the line. So that's why the campaign should start immediately. OK, thank you. An observation from Monty. I hate that the government doesn't let us vote online. Deliberate suppression. If they can vote for a party leader online, we could hold a ballot online, which would lead to a much higher turnout. And Monty, I think a number of us couldn't agree more. I don't know, Mark, if you want to talk about that specifically. Well, no, but... I, I was going to say, uh, Monty's on a roll, and I, I, I completely agree. And, and, and obviously, Liz Truss was the prime minister of this country who inflicted incredible damage on our economy, and she did not get 50% of the vote. No. The law is done to design to make it as hard as possible, not only by the thresholds, but also because of the failure to allow us to have online voting. Let us be clear, if we had had an online ballot here, we would have smashed it in loads more places. The fact we've done it in the majority of areas we've balloted is an incredible effort. And we believe that we, as I say, one vote short in six other employers, HMRC 700 votes short. So they do make it as hard as possible. But I hope what members get from this call is the majority, the overwhelming majority of where we have balloted, huge yes vote, and we've smashed the threshold. And that should be our main focus today. And then say to ourselves, where we didn't, we will reballot an HMRC very early in 2023 and hopefully win there. But in all those other areas that have come close, the NEC was clear that if the reps and members there also want to reballot, then we would encourage people to do that um, as soon as as soon as we can. So, so I agree very much with Monty. Um, they make it as hard as possible. But let's look them back and say, no matter how hard you made it, we've smashed it. We've smashed it in 126 employers with a yes vote averaging 86%. That's an incredible vote. They should listen to it. But if not, they'll see that the action we'll take will put real pressure on them. Okay, thank you. And that's really answered the next question. So somebody asked, will all groups who missed the threshold be reballoted? You've only mentioned HMRC. So hopefully that subsequent comment will have dealt with that. Uh, Lisa Stevens, when would action commence? I think as Mark's explained, the NEC will meet again next Friday to, to put meat on the bones. And then clearly the earliest we could take any action would be 14 days uh, after that, that meeting on the 18th. So that gives you some indication of the time scale. Okay, so Chris Marks asks, uh, Chris Markovich, as you call yourself on here, what is the NEC's threshold for what would represent an acceptable response or compromise back from the employer over the seven day period? So in other words, we've said, haven't we, that, that there will be seven days for the employer to respond. And what Chris is asking is, what would the threshold be? So over to you, Mark. So, um, uh I, I think I get why that question has come in. So let me give Chris some assurance behind that question. The, the NEC was very clear today that anything from the government that says we're happy to talk, uh, we can have discussions into the future, won't cut it. The, the threshold for the NEC, and I'm sure for our members, is they must put on the table a commitment that there is more money available for all members now, that they are not going to cut our redundancy terms, and they are going to enter into a discussion to give us job security. 
And so, you know, to be clear, warm words are not going to cut it. We need to see actions. My take, I think, is they will meet us in the next week. I, I think they'd be stupid not to, and I think we will get a meeting. Um, I'd be very interested to see how they respond. But we haven't come this far to not proceed with action on the basis of warm words on the never never. They would have to be concrete proposals. And I think the NEC is pretty clear that must mean money for people and it must mean uh, commitments about not cutting terms and conditions as a, as a minimum and a job security agreement. Okay, thank you. Uh, Julie Tijon says, I'm allowed to stand up for myself and others at last after 12 years of taking the rubbish that this government had dish dished out to us on pay and pensions. Thank you to everybody who voted and voted yes. So thanks, Julie. I think that's uh, the heartfelt comment that many will agree with. Okay. Um, it might, I think you've probably done this, Mark, but it might just be worth reiterating. An earlier response stated that all of Scotland voted for action. Not sure that's exactly what was said, but there was, a, there was an overwhelmingly high turnout in Scotland. How will this work where HMRC, for example, didn't meet the threshold, but Scotland did? So, Mark, I don't know if you want to just pick that up. Yeah, so, so, so to be clear, I, I think the point I was making is when we've looked at the results, it's clear that in Scotland, by, as defined by the employers in Scotland, the votes there are incredibly strong. But nobody can be called upon to take strike action unless your employer, in you, where you work, has got over the line. So if you are in HMRC in Scotland, currently because of the laws, whatever action is called, you cannot take part in that action until we win the ballot in HMRC. That's, 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 that's how it is, and that's the way the law is set up. We have to win by employer. Um, which is why clearly the sooner we can get HMRC along with everybody else, um, the better. So our focus in Scotland, we'll be discussing with our reps there about those employers whose pay is determined by the Scottish government and whether or not in Scotland, given what's happening there, we can put pressure on the Scottish government to come up with more money. Um, and that's a particular focus. But the question points out an interesting thing, which is most PCS members in Scotland do not work in devolved employers. They actually work in Westminster departments. Um, and the focus for us there has to be the Westminster government that needs to give us the assurances that we want. So I hope that's clarified the question. But to be clear, if you have not breached the threshold in your employer, you can't take action when we call it. And that will be made clear when the union is inducing people to take strikes in, in, the, in the weeks and months ahead. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Uh, John Livingstone, oh, just actually just a me message about MPs. There are lots and lots of MPs sending PCS messages of support, messages of solidarity. John McDonnell has just tweeted um, our, our results and said how, how fantastic he, it is. And we know that John McDonnell has been a long term friend of PCS. So it's really good to see all of that. And people shouldn't underestimate the solidarity that's coming in from the rest of the movement. So I think it's really you know heartwarming to see all of that. OK. Um, Lots of comments from reps wanting to know if their group beat the thresholds. Obviously, I've been chairing the NEC all morning and then we've moved straight into this. So I'm not exactly clear with how much information is, is currently on the website. But what you should find pretty quickly is that you will get a message about your employer group and, whether, and how that's done. But there will also be information on the website. Mark, I don't know if you you have any more than that i mean both you and i have gone literally straight from the nec to here so it's yeah. not clear how much is out there uh, i mean in the um uh i mean if there's any specific questions i can answer those now i mean i, I have that list yeah. in front of me um but just to just to confirm what we said earlier this will all be on the website but we have to make it simultaneous to the notes to the employer so it will be up there shortly and certainly during the afternoon but if there's any you wanted to throw at me now uh, people asking I, I can probably answer that that's great. Thank you. OK, uh, John Livingston says, will we be insisting that we demand pay increases to survive, which will not be detrimental to existing workplace terms and conditions, which we will not concede? So clearly it's quite a, you know, a broad question to try and answer. But I don't know if you want to respond to that, Mark. Yes, John, the, the, the claim for the union is a 10 percent across the board pay rise for everyone with a minimum pay of 15 pounds an hour with no cuts to terms and conditions. Um, and obviously that is what we're seeking for all members who are, are covered by this um, national campaign. So I hope that's a clear answer. 
Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, Tom Redfern. Mark, I don't think I'm going to ask you to answer this because you probably know less about Facebook than most people. But, <laughs> but Tom Redfern says, are we allowed to post things on Facebook about the strike or is this banned political activity? I think we all know, don't we, that the employer watches Facebook and, and there is guidance in every government department about how we deal with social media as employees to the government. But what I would say to you is that nobody can attack you for posting the facts. So it depends very much how, how you couch it. You know, clearly the, there are limits to what's acceptable. And if somebody were to share a very detrimental post with the employer, that could, of course, get somebody into bother. But, but the, the short answer is there's lots and lots of positive messages that are going out currently about about what's happened and what you know what the results are across the union mm -hmm. um and and by all means people are encouraged to share those um and i don't know mark i know, I know facebook isn't your thing but if, i don't know if you wanted to add to that at all. Yeah, we, we all know a snapogram is my thing um I, um I, I yeah I, I just i think the message you've given there is a really good one that if people are on facebook or twitter what you, you mentioned earlier on, there are already MPs putting public tweets out there. There's, there's there's BBC web articles. The union is putting out communications. Clearly, I think what what you know it is all factual stuff, and people should try to get that out and about. But if you have any doubts where you work, talk to your rep because some employers have very draconian social media policies, others less so. Um, but but I would suggest forwarding on what the union is saying officially uh, is, is cannot be a problem and, and there would be lots of stuff out on social media and and as you said you know if you look at MPs whether it's John McDonnell for example and others already piling out what a result it is BBC websites carrying a story that 100,000 civil servants vote for action including people in places like Borders and DWP and driving tests so it is going to pick up quite a lot of coverage and we obviously want as many members to see that as possible. Yeah. And just whilst we've been speaking, there are loads of MPs picking this up. I've just had messages that Kate Osborne, the Jarrow MP, Chris Stevens, our PCS parliamentary group chair, and Ian Lavery, who's an MP in the North East where I live, are all tweeting and retweeting all sorts of messages about PCS right now. So we are very high profile right at this moment. OK, uh, Nick Parker says, ballot results aside, it's so great to see members on here from such a diverse range of organisations. Solidarity from the base group. Well done to everybody who got through the threshold and don't get downhearted where you haven't. Let's regroup in the, the, those areas and then go again. So thanks for that message Nick. Uh, Will Atkinson asks, in theory what would happen if the government came up with an acceptable offer before H HMRC was reballoted? Would HMRC not be eligible for that offer? Mark, do you want to pick that up? Yeah, so, so, so to be clear, our, our, our national dispute is with the government affecting all of our members um, and therefore we want all of our members to be getting an inflation proof pay rate of 10%. We want all of our members to get agreements around job security, pensions money back if they've been overpaying into the civil service pension scheme and no cuts to redundancy. So in the event that the government gets our letter today and says it now wants to meet us to make concessions, uh, we're very clear that we're acting on behalf of all of our members who have been covered in this ballot, whether they've reached the threshold or not. So that's, I hope that reassures a colleague from the HMRC. You know, but I think it's also fair to say the government's track record isn't great. I mean, they weren't making offers to nurses yesterday, were they? They were giving lectures about the economy that they've wrecked is in a mess. So what we have to plan for, I think, is a campaign that could go on a number of months, that we put the maximum amount of pressure on them. If that at any point leads to offers from the government that are significant, I can assure people that the NEC will consider them. And if the NEC believes they're things members should have a vote on, that we would arrange for members across the whole of the union to, to be voting. But could I also just, again, say at this point, Fran, that I, I hope people have got a very strong feeling from what I've said. The next week when we call action, I think we will also be making it clear that we want all members to contribute via direct debit to our strike fund that can be used to pay strike pay to people going on, on strike. And in the same spirit as that question, we want to make gains for every member. 
it is clear that some members will be asked to take more action than others. And I hope that what everybody can agree therefore is if we all contribute to that strike levy, all of us will benefit if those strikes are successful. And I think that's the best way to sum up. We're all in it together, whether you're taking targeted action, all action, or you've just missed the threshold and want to reballot. We want everybody to get more pay, better conditions and pensions justice. And that means we're doing it for everyone. And we hope that everybody will be prepared, therefore, to contribute to support the colleagues who may be taking more strike action on your behalf. OK, thank you. Uh, Joe Roberts says, I work with a lot of contractors, some of whom are independent, some work for suppliers. They are concerned about crossing the picket line or being asked to cover for striking workers. Is there anything we, that we can tell them about what they can do about this? And it's quite hard to generalise here, but I don't know if there's anything you want to say there, Mark. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in general, uh, because obviously we deal with massive contractors, some of whom are in PCS, some of whom are in other unions, and obviously some who are not in any unions at all. Uh, I, I think it, it will vary. What I would suggest is if, if, if you are somewhere now where, you know, you're covered by this campaign, if you talk to a contractor, find out a bit more, you know, who their employer is, are they in the union, which one, and then raise that uh, either with your rep uh, or with uh, your group member or, or, or send us an email in nationally so that we can help. Our commitment in this ballot has been where we have members in private companies, we have said that if those members wish to ballot in order to also use this opportunity to put pressure on their employer, we would support them as well. So, you know, it all depends on who they work for, are they PCS members, but the best thing to do is to talk to them, encourage them to join the union if they're not in the union and give us the details to see what we can do. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, next question. Northern Ireland does not have the 50% threshold that the rest of the UK has. Can Northern Ireland go out on a strike? So obviously the, the issue here is, is if people are employed, um, so let's say people are in HMRC in Northern Ireland, our, our ballot is with HMRC as an employer and therefore the threshold covers us as HMRC as an employer. Um, so, you know, it depends who you work for and whether or not you're in an employer that globally has got, has got over the line, Fran. But if, if somebody's got a specific question that they want to raise with us about the employer, just contact the rep or put it in the chat or email us and we will get back to the specifics of the situation. That's great. Thank you. A couple of observations. Andrew Smith says, when it gets mentioned about our pet benefits, including pensions, can it also be highlighted that we pay for this? It often gets misrepresented as a freebie golden handshake. Absolutely, Andrew. And John Mooney says, well done to all the full-time officers, the reps and the advocates, but let's also thank all members. It's their union. And, and John, that's an you know an absolutely key point that both mark and i would want to echo because you know we're thanking everybody that's taken the time to be involved in this ballot and that's what's led to the result we've got okay mark you might um live to regret say of making that offer of declaring individual results because there's a whole list of them now so you might have to scroll through a bit but the there are a number of uh, government department reps from government departments saying how did our group do so starting off then with the ministry of defense from just for logistics, it might be better if you give me the list and before we finish, I'll come back with them all because I'll obviously okay. Them all good, up. good idea. So, if, you, if you're ready, uh, MOD then, MCA, so the Coast Guards, Welsh Government, MOJ, HMCTS, Land Registry, Land Registry, and then Vivian asks, Does the Home Office result also include HMPO? So there's a whole host of them there. OK, um, so just whilst you are plowing through, Mark, John Mooney says, Mark, I'm giving up wine for the foreseeable future, so I will be able to fund half of the DWP strike fund. It's really good, good to know, John, and no doubt we'll be calling on you. And then Indipal Batu says, I'm disheartened about the HMRC, but equally excited for the brilliant result across PCS. So very proud of PCS and such hardworking comrades who have given so much time and effort for the betterment of everyone with so much passion. I am so proud to be part of PCS. Thank you so much for that. I think that's a lovely message. And then 
Alex Swanson says, will there be an opportunity for branches to take part in a lessons learned about how we can get feedback on how to get even higher turnouts next time? I, for one, hadn't realised how good a tool LinkedIn was for union organising. Who knew? And whilst Mark is ploughing through all of that, I'll try and give you a little bit of an update there, Alex. Um, we have a, a national organising committee within PCS that is going to meet fairly quickly and fairly regularly to go through in, in massive detail all, all of the results. And um, we, what we will do is make sure that um, we are analysing all of that and that fairly quickly we come out to reps and activists and members about you know what lessons have we learned, how can we improve things for the future. I think there was a comment almost at the beginning of this that said, you know, I would like to see the, the, the digital organising, the stuff that we, we've been doing during the um, mm -hmm. during the last six weeks continued on an almost sort of continue, continuous basis to make sure we're keeping our records up to date to make sure that in the future uh, we're in the best place to if we in the, the event of any ballot. What we know, don't we, is that there was an awful lot of work went in in the early part of the six week ballot period to start to cleanse records to make sure that the records were as accurate as possible and really we want that work to continue so that in the future we are in the best possible position so I think Alex your point about lessons learned and about how we can make sure we go for even higher turnouts in the future is a really good point and I'd be fascinated to know about your LinkedIn comment but um, that that's something as you say that we need to learn from. Mark if you have the opportunity to add to your list of both DM FE and DEFRA, who are also asking for their results. So I don't know how you're getting on because I am more or less at the end of the yeah, question. No, no, I'm, I'm happy to let me just pick up those. And then uh, obviously, yeah. um, it, when you want me to come in and sum up at the end, obviously I'm happy to. Great. So happy. In, in, in terms of, and I just want to just stress, all of this will be up this afternoon, but of the, uh, the, the people who, who raised it, the MOD, the MOJ and HMCTS did not get over the 50% threshold. Land Registry did, the Coast Guards did, Department for Education did, DEFRA did, mm -hmm. the Welsh Parliament did, but Welsh Government did not. So that's, that's, that's not bad going. Um, uh, that's, all, that's all the ones I think that, that, that you asked. Yeah. Um, and I am uh, I'm, I'm just waiting to find out about the HMPPO. So if somebody can text me that information behind the scenes, that would be really helpful. And I'll hopefully come back to that before we finish. OK, thank you. So, I mean, if, if Mark, if we haven't covered your specific employer area or group, don't panic because all this information will be available. It's just a matter of making sure we get everything done that we need to under our legal obligations. And then we'll make sure that as much detail as possible is out there and that people can have sight of their, their results. OK, so that is more or less everything that has come into me um if if after this ends you feel that your particular comment or question wasn't fully addressed by all means you can get in touch with any of us and we will endeavor to get you an answer but i think that's pretty much covered what what we um you know what we've had in um i'm going to bring back mark back in a minute to sum up uh, as you know just to to reiterate the nec will be meeting again a week tomorrow so that gives the employer those seven days to come back to us and then we will go from there and as soon as decisions are taken on all this stuff we'll make sure we communicate fully with all of you so i'm going to hand back to mark now in terms of anything you want to say mark in summing up yeah, I just want to, um, first of all, just start by echoing the points made. This has been a remarkable team effort. Members, advocates, activists, reps, lay leaders in all the employers, the NEC and our PCS staff. Uh, people have been really, really working uh, absolutely um, flat out and we should be really proud of what we've achieved. We know that the Cabinet Office in the last two ballots sat back because they didn't think we'd get over the threshold and we came close but we didn't get over it this time in 126 areas we've smashed it and we've not just smashed it we've smashed it and just, just just think of these figures an 86 percent yes vote for strike action it is an incredible result we have also come remarkably close in dozens and dozens of employers 
Um, and again, it's very easy to see a route where it probably won't take much to add those in. We, we're focusing on HMRC first because of its size and importance. And there'll be a huge boost when we get HMRC over the line. But everyone else, when people see their results, we're asking the reps, lead reps in those areas um, in order you know, to, to, to tell us if they also wish to be reballoted so the NEC can, can consider that as well. So the government is now seeing the headlines. They've got the letter. They've seen the letters. 100,000 people have voted to strike. Massive yes vote. The day after nurses took that decision, the day that firefighters confirmed their balloting, in the knowledge that every teaching union is balloting, Scottish teachers way ahead of the game, every health union is balloting. We know that RMT have been involved in a dispute and still ongoing. So are postal workers, so are BT engineers, so are lecturers. Most people are reaching the conclusion we've reached. What we've demonstrated is some of the biggest yes votes of any union and an incredible turnout across the majority of areas we balloted. So we've shown we are strong. What we've now got to show is we can turn the ballot into winning. And that's why I want to finish with these assurances. Everyone can play a part. Whether you're called on to take action or not, you could recruit a non-member. You can make sure that when we ask people to pay a higher levy than 50p, they understand why it is. You can make sure that your area is ready if we're being prepared to reballot. If we all work in it together, we can win, whether you're in a small employer or whether you're in one of the huge government departments. We know that we have members who, if they stop work, can cause chaos. No driving licenses, no driving tests, delays at the borders, problem in immigration, no job centers open, no payments to farmers. We, we can disrupt business that is vital to many, many people in this country and the government know it. But what they know today that they didn't know before is we now have the legal mandate and ability to call that action. That's why we think it's important to give them the seven days because we promised members we would do it but we use every minute and every hour of those seven days to be preparing for the action that we'll probably have to announce next Friday and that we raise the money and we build the union in a way that we can win. That's why we'll be spending time with 30 other unions on Monday to ensure that what we do helps them as well as them helping us to ensure that we can win. So if everybody can make sure you check out your results, if you can explain to members what you've heard today, if you realize that if we call you out for targeted action, it's because we think it can make a difference and the union will ensure that people do not lose out financially. If you're not called out in targeted action, if you can make sure that everybody knows why we're raising more money. And when we do call all members out on action, the more people who join the call, the more effective the action, the quicker we can make real gains and win the dispute. Fran, I think the NEC to a person today was united in recognising the significance of this vote and the fact that we have the ability to win alongside other unions. Critically today, what we've done is ensure that we aren't left behind, that other unions take action and get concessions and we can't. We are now in a position that we can do as much, if not more, than other unions itself. So let's be proud of what we've done, but recognise we've got to turn this now potentially into the action that could put pressure on. The union still needs to grow, and the money that we will be collecting, every penny will go to pay somebody strike pay to ensure they don't lose out if they're striking on your behalf. So I want to thank people. There'll be lots of other events like this and lots of other communications. If you've got an issue, raise it with your rep and make sure we know about it. But let's be ready next Friday when we announce the first wave of strikes to be ensure if it includes you, it's massive. But if it doesn't include you, but somebody else, that you're ready to send them messages of support, join their picket lines and make sure we're raising the money to keep them out on your behalf. We can do it. You deserve 10% pay, more resources, not less, and no cuts in your terms and conditions. We're now in a position to fight for it. Let's make sure that we win. Thanks very much. OK, thanks very much, Mark. OK, just for completeness, Corey Davis has said, is there a strike fund which people can pay into? Is it, is it set up yet? And we will communicate all of that, Corey, in some detail the minute that, that that's available. And, and clearly, you know, we we do already have a hardship fund, but it but once we've got the specifics around how people pay into the strike fund, we can make sure that that is fully communicated. As Mark said, there'll be lots of communications on this in the days ahead. Mark, do you want to add to that at all just before we go? Um, yeah, I just want to say that the HMPPO, I'm pretty certain, is covered in the Home Office ballot. 
um, okay. um, and, and if and if uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain, I'm just getting that confirmed now for the person who asked that question. Yeah, in terms of the strike fund, uh, we have a hardship fund. We have a sort of a strike fund that everybody's 50p goes into. Currently stands at just under three million. The NEC has agreed to put a further million pounds into that, so we've got money. Every money we get in, whether it's through the levy that we ask people to 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 ensure that they uh, pay through the direct debit or whether it's through voluntary donations, will all go towards paying strike pay. And we will advertise that for any member who wants to give more uh, than any levy that, that, the, that the NEC uh, decides. Uh, and it may well be, and I'm just going to finish with this thought, we've seen two employers, leaks from employers, where they've looked at our strike fund and they conclude it's got three million in it, so we can sit that out. The minute they see that we are going to raise millions of pounds, and we can keep that going for months is the minute they'll stop being so arrogant and dismissive and start realizing they need to put proposals on the table so raising the money is probably every bit as important uh, to support those out on strike as actually the, the the whole of the campaign so so let's make sure we do that together as well and let's make sure that we government realize we're in it to win it fran so solidarity to everyone brilliant thank you that's a great note to finish john just to say um an organisation that we work closely with are the People's Assembly. Um, I'm on the National Steering Committee. They are sending lots and lots of messages of support to PCS members everywhere. And if anybody was in London on November the 5th, you'll know that, that, that there is a, a mass movement building in terms of trying to coordinate action across all these unions, which is going to be really important in terms of some of our campaigns. So thank you so much for dialing in. Uh, I, I recognise that, you know, this is in a lunchtime. Uh, recognise that lots and lots of people have lots of other things that they need to be doing. More information will come out in terms of the detail. For the person that asked the question, that employer in you know detail broken down by branch will be available, not immediately, but we will make sure that we get that as soon as we can. Um, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody that's made this the success that it is. For those areas that haven't quite done it, we will work with you to make sure that we, we can change that. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your efforts. Mark's going to say something else. No? Sorry, I just want to let people know that the full results and the email to members will imminently be going out. So we're, 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 right. we're just a matter of minutes from that. So just to let Please. people know, it'll all be out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone. Take care, speak to you all.